Semaphore, a system of sending messages by using flags or poles. Or is it? Semaphore by Spider Oak. No bueno. I'm just going to say it right there. No bueno. If you haven't read it yet, up there or over there or who knows where it will be, will be uh, the link to the review that I wrote yesterday on Semaphore and kind of what I went through and how difficult it was to really see and figure stuff out. I'm not going to take a lot of time delving into it because you can read that review, you'll see some screenshots and you actually hear uh, the difficulties I ran into. But the one thing I want to really stress about this thing is that it is a beta. It is at the very first of really working at this, what is possibly a great thing, 100% no peak, totally encrypted collaboration tool. Unfortunately, it's not there. It's not even close. It's so far away from a collaboration tool that you can literally just call it an encrypted chat application right now. The, the user interface, the way that it looks, the way that it is, is nice in a roundabout way. You either like it looks or you don't like the looks. But what makes it difficult is how you invite a user, how you get them into the teams, how you do all that simplistic stuff that you can do on Slack and River is just made a little bit more complicated in Semaphore. The actual setting up of channels and teams is really easy, but that's just one, there's only one other thing that's really easy and that's sending a direct message to somebody. That's only because you gotta click on their icon or avatar, profile picture, whatever you wanna call that, and hit message. That's the only other thing that's easy. Everything else is difficult and cumbersome to do. Um, if you read the article, you'll see where I go through all the process of the setup and everything else. And it was just not there. It's just, once you do the setup, you know, you can set up by email or, or not use an email. I chose to use an email. But once you're set up, you're stuck. I mean, I literally unloaded, I mean, I, uninstalled the application, emptied my trash, reinstalled the application, and it took me right back to where I was. I couldn't even do a new setup. And that means that there's a file stuck somewhere that I gotta find that's keeping all that data. So when I reinstall a new program or a new instance of it, it's taking that file and it's generating that stuff, but I don't want that. The problem I ran into is you can't delete the teams or the channels that you make if you're the admin. It makes sense if you are just a person, just a general member. I can understand not them having any controls over deleting anything. But if you're the one setting the thing up, and let's say you accidentally name a channel or a team incorrectly and you just want to delete it, you can't. You can't edit it either. So if you misspell a word, you're stuck with the mispronunciation or the misspelling of it. And that's really, why can't you do that? That's the most simplistic thing out there to fix and figure out is be able to edit. You can't edit in the, in the context of the, te of the conversation. So if you misspell a word, if you write something wrong, if you put in the wrong attachment, you can't delete it. You can't edit it. And if you're going to make a collaboration tool where you expect people to type versus talk, then you got to have those features in there. There's, it's not actually collaboration yet. It's basically a long string. If you think about it, it's a simplistic form of an email thread just one repeating after the other all the way through. So if you have something specific you want to reply to in that thread, you can't do it. Your message is going to get lost. You also can't tag somebody within the conversation. Give them a notification, if you will, uh, that they're involved in that conversation. It's not there either. 
you know, in Slack and, and River and all the other ones, you can hit the at and put their name, their username, and then their mention. So then they get a, a notification of the mentioning so they can go and review it and view what it is. You don't get that here. And that's, that's like one of the foremost things you need. So you can't do that. Getting people invited into the system, into the team, and then into the uh, channel is a multi-step process. You just can't invite somebody directly into a channel and they automatically be included in the team, which doesn't make sense. I understand if you're just doing the team, you're not going to get invited to any specific channel. But if I'm going to invite you into a channel, something that is a sub-menu of a menu, so to speak, there's just no way. You gotta go through the process of adding them to the team and adding them to the channel. And that's just a whipping. I understand the reasoning behind it. I really, really do. But I don't wanna to have to do six things just to do the one thing I actually wanted. I don't want that. And it needs to be faster and it needs to be quicker in regards to inviting people. Now, let's talk about speed for a moment. The thing always sinks. It's constantly sinking, and I understand that. But there's gotta be a time where it stops. I mean, CJ, the gentleman who I actually tested this out with, the poor guy, the sink can never stop for him. It was like a constant boot loop. And, and, it's, and it's these funky colors going around in this QR code looking thing, and my God, it drives you nuts. It's like you're, I, don't even, I can't even tell you what it's like. You just look at that thing and you just stare at it, and 20 minutes go by because you can't stop staring at the stupid thing. And there's just no reason for it. I understand that what it's doing in the background, I understand the reasons why, but man, is it horrid. Um, the, you have the ability to add more devices, and you can, but you can't because there's no applications on iOS or the Android app store yet. So I can't add any device. I can't add an iPhone, I can't add an Android phone, which is okay right now for beta. But if you're gonna put that function in there for people to look at, to be able to do, you need to have the ability for them to do it. It does me no good to test it and see how it works on the mobility side if you don't give me the opportunity to test on the mobility side. It just doesn't do it. Um, it's a Mac only, Windows people, you just SOL. I mean, that's 85% of the computers, basically. I mean, give or take some percentage, but doggone, we're talking about well over the majority. You didn't hit. They're not even out there yet. And that's a huge, huge mistake. I understand that you got to do for one platform. I understand you did for Mac, and I, and I like that because I'm a Mac guy. But at the same time, if you're going to do a beta, you know, you should at least try to do the two biggest operating systems kind of at the same time. You know, uh, it brings to mind another failure of this is uh, ELO, LO, whatever you want to call that social network. You know, it's great. You can do web, which is awesome, but it's iOS. But they keep saying they're going to bring an Android app, which they never have. So the people who are using Android which is the number one operating system right now, they're not going to use it. They're not going to use that platform because they can't. There's no way for them to use it. I'm not going to do something on my phone and then download it just to put it on my computer, just go to your web application just so I can upload to web because you can't give me an application for my, for my phone. So that's going to be an issue uh, with this as well. The, the biggest gripe I have out of this whole thing, and I will leave a link down below so you can get on it, if you have a Mac, um, so you can get on it and try the beta version, is that it's way, way too soon to call it beta. It really needs to be an alpha uh, version. It's not anywhere close to where it needs to be. It's so far behind everything else, I really just want to call it a chat application. I don't even want to call it collaboration. I'm not going to get into the encryption because the way that they're doing the encryption is awesome. You kind of have to look in the back end and talk to people who understand encryption to, to know what they're doing. 
so I'm not going there. It's beautiful that there is a tool out there that is 100% collaboration uh, and totally encrypted, and that is no peak, but it doesn't do us any good to have all that great stuff if your product is nowhere near ready. Really what, they, what they've what they done is bring it out just a bit too early. And they might have had to bring it out, I don't know, I don't really care, but it's out way too early. They have so much more work to do, so much to pick up. They are so far behind. If you rank all of the collaboration tools and you put all of the good ones together in one pile, and let's say they're at a nine, this is at a two. It's not even close. It's not in the ballpark. It's not in the same city. It's not even in the same damn state. That's how far apart they are. The, the one thing I urge people to do is go try it. Not because of the fact that you're going to fail at doing a lot of things. Not the fact that it's going to frustrate you. Not at the fact that you're not going to be able to get more people on there. But it shows you what can be done encryption-wise. How they do the profile cards is awesome. How they do the actual invitation, what they're utilizing for invitation, is so much better than what's out there, especially when you're talking about encryption, and that's the name of the game, is encryption. Because what they're giving you is something that nobody else can see but you and the people involved. That is awesome. Not the government, not them. That is true no peak. No matter what happens, even if people go in and they get the servers and they somehow can get the information, there's no way they can tell what that information is. Nothing. And that's the beauty of peer-to-peer -peer encryption. Of course, we know how torrents work, peer-to-peer uh, -peer encryption, and it works along the same ways. Yeah, there's some similarities and there's a whole bunch of differences between the two, but the idea is still the same. It's peer-to-peer -peer encrypted, which is awesome, which is what we want in the private sector for us personally. If I wanted to chat with family and I was worried about people looking in or if I was in a different country and I was worried about that, this would be a great tool for that because of all the web. But if I'm on my phone, it's not... They don't have an app yet, so it doesn't do me any good. It doesn't do me any good to call it a collaboration application if all you're doing is chatting. There's no collaboration involved. So, in the loosest sense, it's a great alpha. It really, really is. In the worst sense, it's a horrid collaboration tool and not really worth your time if you're looking for a new collaboration tool. If you're looking for something like Slack, River, Hip chat, a couple of the other ones that are out there that are doing this collaboration thing, then those are where you want to go. But if you want 100% encryption, no peak, and you really want to be at the forefront and see this thing grow, hit the link below and go out and try it. And get a couple people to try it with you and see how it works for you. For us at ByronDoss.com, our community, this and entire process. I'm not going to call it a wasted effort because it really wasn't because it's cool to see new stuff. It's cool to see great things. But what I will call it is a waste of time because it's not there yet. Had the beta been to the point to where it was an actual collaboration tool, then we would be talking about something different. But it's not. It's still alpha. Even though they call it beta, it's still alpha. Take that to heart when you do it. Take it to heart that it takes a second or two for things to happen because it's going through encryption, because it's making things right. And then if you have that and you just be patient with it, I think you'll do fine. But if you're like me, who can really go through all these other programs and really the UI helps you figure all the stuff out and do things very quickly, this one I actually had to go to the support page and that's the frustrating is you have to read how to do something and in our technology days if I have to read how to invite somebody and then figure out that I have to invite them twice into something 
And that means you need to really update your UI and make it a little bit more intuitive. So having said that, go look at the review, read it, download it if you want to try, give it a shot, tell me what you think. Post some comments at the bottom of this, put them online, send me an email, byron at byron.com. Let me know what you think. As always, you can hit our River Channel, come on into the forums, and uh, chit chat about everything else that we're talking about. And then don't forget, last item is that we got a third quarter giveaway, which who the hell knows where these damn cars go, but it's going to show up. You go and click on it, and you can go put your name in the hat and see if you want something. If you want something else, shoot me an email. If you don't, meh, cool. Burger time.